wrote in recently, I bought the Magnavox Blu-ray player at Walmart for $98. I have several different DVD players in my home and none seem to have a problem playing any DVDs, whether old or new. Yet I keep hearing about how Blu-ray players have to be updated. Is the industry working on a standard that will allow you to pop in a Blu-ray movie without having to worry about updating? John in El Paso, Tejas. Uh, short answer is no. <laughs> but anyway, the, the firmware update, though, the, the, actually for that particular player, there is a firmware update. I went and checked on the company's website. But I can't believe it's going to resolve, or I can't guarantee actually that it will resolve uh, any issues you're having with certain Blu-ray disc titles that come out. Uh, Avatar is using a new protection scheme that may cause compatibility issues with some new Blu-ray Blu players until they're updated. But that's, that's the funny thing is, is in, the, in, in the era of the DVD, you had to basically build a protection scheme that worked within the relatively finite container that is a DVD disc. But Blu-ray, they have a lot of interaction between the disc and the player. And if the player hasn't been updated, which can take place by the disc, by a US downloaded, like downloading an update to a USB key over an Ethernet or wireless connection. Yeah. Uh, off the Blu-ray disc itself. No. no. There are no firmware updates on the movies. I thought they could do firmware updates on the movies. They might. No. They, I, I imagine Bummer. they could. But, but they're not. No. Because you have so many players out there with different microcode mm -hmm. that goes the software inside of a player. It's called firmware. And since the inception of the Blu-ray players, uh, they've gone through several evolutions of the hardware right. itself, adding new features. Uh, a couple in particular, Bonus View, the mm -hmm. AKA Picture in Picture, as well as the Internet-enabled BD Live functionality are two of the main examples of, of new features that were added to Blu-ray players as time went on and as the spec became more fleshed out, you could say. Now, copy protection technology that we were talking about a little while ago, Blu-ray discs are constantly evolving in ways to stop people from copying those discs and updating the internal software from, for the players in order to be compatible with some of those new protection schemes. I think that's going to be an ongoing deal. So basically, if you're going to pick up an inexpensive Blu-ray player. You want to go check with the company's website right. to make sure that hopefully the company's going to support it in the future. Otherwise, that, that temptingly low price really doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So be sure to check out your manufacturer's websites to see if they actually do any updates for any previous products as well to gauge whether or not you're going to be able to get an update for that current product. Yeah, doing, doing a search for the product in the AV form of the manufacturer can also be helpful because a lot of things like your Magnavox player are actually made by a gigantic company in China that makes players for a whole bunch of companies, in which case there there might be an opportunity if, say, mega old 70s brand that isn't around anymore but has suddenly reappeared in your local big box store, for example, oh, Polaroid. DVD players, I think those came out a few years ago, or televisions. Um, so Polaroid and Magnavox are both manufactured by the same company. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're basically, they, you know, the valuable brands. People recognize the brand, right? As far as Blu-ray players go. So you can basically look at the mothership, you know, the, the manufacturer that makes all the boxes and then puts other people's labels on them to see if they have a firmware player for your Blu-ray player to give it a little more life. Totally, totally. <laughs> and what else? Was That's the other thing, too. The nice thing about the newer Blu-ray players we're seeing nowadays is that they're internet-connected devices. That $98 player doesn't have a network jack on it, so you're not going to be able just to connect it to the internet. For that particular player, the, the Walmart uh, $98 special, you'd actually have to burn that data to a CD or a DVD, <laughs> insert that into the player and update it that way. And they haven't updated that it's firmware, by the way, since last uh, December. Doable. So. Yeah. And I should point out, at least there's I, an update. <laughs> I said DVD players usually all played within their little box. I think it was the Matrix had some problems on totally. some. Totally. Almost uh, sure DVD when that players. first came out, there were certain players that are having issues with that particular disc. Anytime they go experimenting, yeah. usually with copy protection schemes, uh, they try something new to help thwart the copying that's going on there that they want to prevent. Yeah. That usually is what breaks the players themselves. So Oops. It can. Hopefully, this will all kind of standardize in the future. I'm not holding my breath, though. No. <laughs>